Hey guys, we're back. Smoking meat with Pat Paul. I'm Caleb. This is Pat Paul Greg here. Hey everybody. Today we're gonna get into uh, some smoked meatloaf, one of my favorites. Um, with that being said, we'll get into what we're gonna be doing here here shortly. Um, in the meantime, if you haven't, go like, subscribe to our page on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, check out you know what we've already done. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did some smoked wings. Um, Grandpa, why don't you tell us about how we did those and what all went into that? Well, we smoked them. <laughs> and, uh, folks, we had a great time doing those wings for you the last time. Uh, if you missed it, you can still find it on YouTube, I'm sure. So uh, uh, you look us up, Smoking Meat with Papa. And uh, th these wings we did, we, we smoked them naked on my Masterbuilt 560. And then we used the uh, Cosmos wing dust. Uh, we had three flavors we used. Uh, four flavors, actually. That's what I, that's right. But uh, they turned out great. You missed them because you weren't here with us. I'm sorry, but you can sure do it yourself. But today, we're going to get into meatloaf, as Caleb mentioned, uh, using Jeff Phillips' recipe, tried and true. I've been following his recipe and his smoking uh, work for a long time and learned a lot from him. And uh, uh, we're going to be using his recipe for the meatloaf. We're going to put a couple of them together for you. And we're also going to do some macaroni and cheese uh, also. I'm going to use two smokers today. I'm going to use my master belt again for the meatloaf. I'm going to use my uh, bighorn uh, pellet grill for the uh, macaroni and cheese. We'll get that fired up after a while. But uh, I thank you for being here with us today again, folks. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up, okay? We'll answer anything we can the best to our ability, okay? We're over at the prep counter here. I'm gonna have Caleb mix up our meat uh, mixture here with uh, doing two meatloafs. Each one gets a pound of ground beef and a pound of uh, sausage. So we're doing uh, uh, four pounds total. I'm gonna stir up a little bread mixture here with some buttermilk and some egg. And then we're gonna saute some vegetables I've already got cut up, some green red peppers and some onion. Gonna get them sauteed and good and hot. And then we get to mix it all together in the big bowl. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing, folks. So uh, might not be a lot of talk going on, but we're just watch us, okay? All right, so ready for me to mix this up? Go for it, bub. Got the dog down here on the floor catching crumbs, so don't worry about dropping anything. Salsa. That's Murphy, everybody. Newest family member. Mix it all up? Yeah, mix it up. That's why you got the gloves on. Now, what would be a, a good consistency um, in your mixture? You don't have to stir it or mix it up a whole lot. It's better if you don't. Okay. Just just see that you get the sausage and ground beef mixed up because we're going to have to mix everything else in and you're going to have to mix it up some more. But the more you handle it, the looser it'll be. Okay. And you don't want it real loose. Okay. So that's probably good enough for now then. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, here, here comes the tricky part. I hope this works. One down. Uh-oh, a little bit of shell. It's all right, I got it. This didn't taste so good, I wouldn't do it, folks. How many eggs per pound of meat? Or is there a, uh, a there ratio be, there? Be two eggs per uh, loaf, okay. so a total of four. Oh, golly, that looks great. Mm. 
Mm. Trouble with that? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that looks like breakfast of champions right here now. <laughs> Now once I get the uh, veggies sautéed, we're going to dump all this on top of the meat and stir it up again. Pretty mixture, huh? You know, the whole uh, story with meatloaf is you use the bread, the veggies, it just stretches out that meatloaf by adding all these fillers to it. That's what they did back in the day, folks. I know that from growing up with it. Yeah, meatloaf's kind of a, an American classic anyways, as it is. So oh, yeah. You add smoke to it, it adds that much more flavor to it. We'll get out there on the, port, on the deck here in a few minutes and get the grills fired up. And uh, that's the exciting part. I love to f build a fire. Love to get it started. Smell that smoke starting to roll. Ain't nothing better. I want to thank our production team today. Absorb Productions, Austin and Katie. But uh, uh, they're here with us today. Uh, so we don't, uh, Caleb and I don't have to film it ourselves. And we really appreciate their help. All righty, let's see if this is ready to go. Oh, it's hot. Just kind of uh, get these heated up for a few minutes until the veggies kind of become a little translucent where you can kind of see through them a little bit. Then they're ready. Thank you. Okay, folks, we got the veggie sauteed. We're ready to dump all this together in the big purple bowl on top of our uh, meat mixture. We're going to get it stirred up once it cools down a little bit because this is going to be hot in there when I dump it on the meat. I've gone through it before. Just a tip guys. If you pour this in there and reach in and start mixing it up, you're going to wish you hadn't. Trust me. So anyway, we're going to let it cool for a second before we jump in on it. Anyway, here we go. Doesn't that look good? And what all did you put in those when you were sauteing? That's right. Thanks for bringing that up, Caleb. I, uh, while it was sautéing, I put in a little of uh, uh, hog waller rub and uh, some barbecue sauce and mixed it in there with the mixture. And, uh, yeah, just sit down. Put it in the, yeah, just drop it in the sink. And mixed that all in there, stirred it up, and then, boy, it smells really good. Now, right here, guys, this doesn't look the greatest, but that's our bread, buttermilk, and egg mixture. That goes in on top of it. And that will help kind of cool those veggies off because this is cold. All right, so we're letting it cool here a minute, guys, and uh, just kind of see the steam coming off of it still. So it, it's hot. But in just a minute, we're going to let uh, Caleb reach his uh, gloved hands in there and start stirring it up again. And then we're going to uh, form it into loaves. Don't look very appetizing right now. This is our first episode with real cameras instead of an iPhone. The first one wasn't best of quality, but I think we, we did pretty darn out. good with it, though. I think this almost qualifies for dirty jobs. <laughs> All right, folks. Here's the messy part of the job. Another messy part. Caleb's got the gloves on, so I'm going to let him do it. And I'm just going to be a, a guiding influence here for him. So we're going to form it into two loaves on this pan here. They're going to be pretty big loaves. Yeah, they will be. That's what we want for uh, if there's any leftovers after tonight. It makes awful good sandwiches, folks. And go ahead and do your second one there, and then we'll see if there's any leftover and build from there. Look 
Looking good, looking good. Well, you about had her divided up perfect. Just about. Scrape some of these extras off. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just fill it in. Don't want to waste it. Shape it up here. All right, there you have it. Think you got it all? I think so. Okay, folks. That looked pretty good. It'll look even better in a couple hours. All right, well, with that being said, we're going to go to the grills now and get them fired up. Yep, get the grill fired up and uh, take us a few minutes for it to get up to temperature. But uh, we'll be back with you shortly. We'll see you on the deck. All right, folks, here we are. We're out on the deck. Sun shining, blue skies. The weekend was nothing like this. We're on, it's Monday, and we've got sun shining. Why is that? It's rained anyway, all weekend. Yeah. Anyway, we're out here at the uh, master belt on the deck, the 560 model. We've got it fired up, just watching it come up to temperature. We're, we're looking for 225 for this cook for the meatloaf. It'll be there shortly. This thing heats up quick, guys. I can't say enough good about this cooker. I, I love it. Love that natural charcoal and wood taste and smell. Uh, you can't beat it in my in my book. Now, I've got a pellet grill too. I'm going to use it later for the mac and cheese. But um, for cooking meat, you can't get any better than this. I don't believe it. So anyway, we've got it fired up. We've got the temperature coming up. Uh, Caleb, what do you think? What else we got? So, last episode you talked a little bit about this smoker. Um, I've had some other people ask me some questions about it. So, one of the things I was curious about is how does this thing, how does it work? I mean, your typical charcoal smoker, you know, you put your charcoal in, you heat it up, wait till the, you know, the coals get white or what have you, and you put your meat on it. This here is a charcoal smoker, so how do you, how does it work in general? I mean, I know you put your coals in there, you know, can you just kind of explain to me how, how, how you get your smoke flavor out of this? Well, it's basically the same thing. You put your coals in, you get them started, it heats up, and you okay. cook on it. Okay. But we've come up in age in these things. Correct. As you see over here, we've got the electronics, the digital electronics like your pellet grills do. This is hooked up. You just turn your temperature to where you want it. It's hooked to a fan down underneath here. And uh, the coals are in this, this hopper right here. You dump the coals in, the charcoal, lump charcoal, briquettes, whatever you want to use. And I also put some wood chunks in there. I've got some cherry wood chunks in there today. So we're going to cook the meatloaf with the cherry wood. And uh, you light it down underneath here. This is the uh, clean out bin. But there's also uh, where you light it is down here in this clean out bin. So you light it down there, you let it go for about five minutes, make sure it's fired up good, this, the uh, charcoals are burning on the bottom. Then you turn the electronics on over here, set your temperature, and it, it kicks the fan on. There's a fan down below here that blows right in here on the charcoal. And whatever temperature you want it to, that fan is going to go up in uh, you know, uh, the spinning of it. It's going to go faster the higher the temperature. So uh, that's that's the ease of it there. So really, the fan is what controls your heat input and output. Yeah, to an exactly. Uh -huh. okay. And it's also uh, th uh, thermostatically controlled, where when it gets to temperature, the fan backs off. Okay. And when it starts going down, the fan kicks back up again and starts bringing the heat back up on it. Right. As you can see here, we've gone down here to, from nothing. And we're up to almost 200 degrees right now. So it, it hits up pretty quick. It moves up pretty quick, guys. Uh, you got to try these out. They're awesome. Love it. Now, that's a, a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi symbol there, right? So it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi right. capabilities? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got the app on my phone. It's this Master Build app. Okay. You can hook up to the, uh, um, uh, the Wi-Fi on here or the Bluetooth. I'm not using that today, 
just not a, as big a, uh, as long a cook, so I'm just doing right. it simply. I'm using my uh, Thermapro probe here today. Uh, I really kind of like to use those uh, more so than the build-in. But uh, we're gonna, once we get the meatloaf out here and in the grill, I'll insert the probe into it, and uh, that's gonna keep our temperature. And it's also uh, wireless. So I've got another unit of the Thermapro inside, and we can go back inside and sit in the recliner and watch the temperature. So I like that part of it. Also, this platform here didn't come with it. No. So how did you go about getting this worked out on here? Well, unfortunately, the first model of the 560 did not come with a shelf on the front. That was the one big thing that was missing off of it. So I saw on a Masterbuilt forum where somebody else had bought a, uh, uh, a metal shelf unit uh, online and installed it and then put a, a butcher block on top of it. So that's basically what I did. I ordered the unit and uh, my neighbors across the street here, Terry and Jerry Myers, have the Myers cabinet shop here in town, build custom cabinets. I just did a little sweet talking to them and they built me this shelf here, put it together for me. This is Hoosier curly maple, folks. Hard, it's not going anywhere. It'll last forever. So that's where this came from. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Comes in handy. All right, uh, also on this, these slides here, I was kind of curious, what, what are those for, what do those do? Yeah, what these are here, uh, pretty integral part of this machine here. Uh, once you get your fire lit, got the coals going good, these slides come out. This is what controls your airflow in and out of the cooker. So you want to pull those out and make sure they're out of there. And they got a nice little hanger for you to hang them on over here. But that's how the airflow comes through. The fan blows in down here below, up into the charcoal that's burning your fire. And uh, then it blows through a tube that's in the bottom lower portion of this grill. And it disperses the heat and the smoke through that tube across the bottom and it rolls out on, on the front and back of it. So that's, that's how that works. Then it's got a, you might see the smoke release coming out the back here now. It doesn't have a stack on it like a lot of the cookers do. They've just got a slot back there it slides out of it. I've got a drip pan underneath here, just so we don't mess up the bottom of the smoker too much. Yeah, look at that smoke. I like mm -hmm. that. There we go. You want to feed that through that right here. There's a slot down there. All right, we're gonna feed this uh, in here and insert it in and watch for a temperature of about 155. When it gets there, we're gonna put a little, uh, brush a little barbecue sauce on top and let that cook a little bit up to about 160 and then be ready to eat after that, folks. So we're cooking. All right, folks, here's a mac and cheese. Got a little breadcrumb topping on it. Hope that was crisp it up a little bit. I'm gonna put it on the uh, pellet grill here. Got it running about 225, 230. Stick it on there. Let her cook for about an hour, hour and a half maybe. We'll just see how it does. It's already cooked. You know, we just have to basically heat it up and get it crispy on top. But uh, we'll let that go. The meatloaf at the moment is sitting about 122 degrees. Uh, we're gonna get it to about 155. Then we're going to brush on some barbecue sauce on the top of it and let it cook for a little, just a short time longer, and uh, then it would be ready to go. So folks, we'll be back with you later. Stay tuned. Time to pull the mac and cheese off the pellet grill here. So I'm going to get that real quick. We're going to get some close-up pics of it for you. Ooh, look at that smoke. That looked pretty good. I bet it'll taste good. A few more minutes, we're going to... Uh, Put some barbecue sauce on the uh, meatloaf, get it ready to go. Let it uh, kind of caramelize on there for a few more minutes. So uh, won't be long and we'll be sitting down to eat that stuff up. I can't wait. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay guys, we got this up to about 155 now, the meatloafs I'm talking about. 
and we're gonna put some sauce on them. I got some Blues Hog barbecue sauce here. Wish you could smell it. You'd want to be here with us. But here we go. We're gonna sauce her down. Look at those babies right now. Does that look good or what? Oh man, this is gonna be good. And uh, all of us here, we haven't eaten for two days just waiting on this. So uh, it's gonna go in a hurry. I don't think there's gonna be any sandwich material left over off this. Oh boy, that's gonna be good. We hope this inspires some of you folks to wanna to do this yourself. And I'm trying not to focus on stuff that you hear about every day. The pork butt, pulled barbecue, uh, brisket, ribs. Try and do some different things here. Uh, maybe people didn't realize you could even do on a, on a, a smoker. But this is what's really fun, is, is experimenting and trying new things out. And I think you could really get a kick out of this. So when should you paint the barbecue on? Um, on this cook, about five degrees before done, just just long enough to give it a good caramelization on that sauce. And again, folks, like I said, that's uh, uh, Blues Hog. Good stuff. They've got several varieties. I can't give you the, the names of all of them, but uh, we really like it. It's really good. So uh, we're done with that. We're going to let it cook a few more degrees, get that sauce caramelized, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, we're going to be ready to eat. All right, guys, we're pulling these meatloafs off of here. Oh, gosh, I wish this was smell-o-vision. Looky there. Pull the probe out of there. Get it out. Hot stuff. Oh, it smells good. Holy cow. Oh, can you imagine what that's going to taste like? I'm telling you folks, you never put a meatloaf back in the oven. No way. All right, everybody. We're here at the dining table with the end results of our meatloaf and macaroni and cheese cook. We're getting ready to take a bite of this. I wish you were all here to enjoy this. But then again, I probably wouldn't get any if you were. So uh, just uh, keep watching us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Want to see you on there, folks. We really, uh, uh, we're really getting a kick out of doing this. The filming has been fun. It's great to be involved with all the family. And again, I can't stress enough. Food, family, fellowship. That's what it's all about, everybody. So keep watching us, and we'll have some more good times the next time around. Uh, we're going to try to do another one probably in a couple of weeks, so be watching, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be on there. We'll let you know when it's coming, too. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy.